Stop letting society tell you about the best skincare routines, the hottest plastic surgeons, or the cream that will keep your skin from aging. It's time we start asking ourselves, what the fuck is beauty anyway? If we remove all the IG filters, is there more to a beautiful face than just skincare? Well, I'm here to share it with you, and hell yeah there is. My name is Jen Carrasco. I have been an esthetician, as well as a high-level fitness competitor, and an all-around badass for over a decade. And I need you to know there is way more to keeping your mind and body clean than just a cream. Join me each week as I cut the BS out of getting healthy, caring for ourselves, and caring for our skin. I share real tips, real ingredients, and real experience. Now let's get some answers on what the fuck is beauty anyway. What is going on, guys? It's Jen here today talking And I want to talk a little bit about uh, relationships today. I'm going to talk about really what the fuck is relationships sometimes. And I want to talk about always having a plan B. And you're going to take that in a bad way. And I don't mean it that way. But my whole life, you know, growing up, I'll just say that I've learned a lot actually been, being in my current relationship now for two and a half years. But growing up with a single mom, I was always taught about having to take care of yourself, never depending on a man, never depending on somebody to take care of you. And I agree with that to a certain extent. Definitely have to make sure that you are taken care of especially I think in the world that we live in right now, because people are very quick to give up. And that's, that's literally with anything in life. People are quick to give up on something because it's hard work and it's dedication. But I guess I've never really looked at a healthy relationship because I've never been involved in a healthy relationship. And I, to be honest, was probably always the problem in the relationship because I always had my foot out the door. And what that means is I never truly worked on anything. I always thought to myself, you know what, this just doesn't work. I'm done. I'm moving on. And now that I look back and I think of situations that were my fault, which They all pan out the way that they should be because I was in all of the wrong situations. And I knew that before I even got into it. I just always thought that people would change or something would change. And of course, that comes with time and knowledge and and expertise that the only person that can change is really, it's really yourself. You're the only person that can change anything. And so the reason why I say plan B is because... In every single relationship I've ever been in, I've always had a plan B. I have always had a bag packed. I've always had stuff where it needs to be to where I can grab it easily. And coming into my current relationship that I'm in now, you know, I did a lot of soul searching. I was married for 10 years. Definitely wasn't, I guess I didn't know really who Jen was and finding out who Jen was within the 10 years and really growing up. I mean, honestly, what I'm 41 now getting married, you know, I, I think a lot of people take a long time to grow up and I was definitely one of them. Now, if you, you threw me in business, you threw me in athletics, I don't give up. I'm, I am driven, but when it comes to somebody telling me what to do as far as a relationship wise, or if I don't agree upon something, I'm very quick to walk away and not put up with it. And honestly, 
how do I say this? You are only as good as you are good, if that makes sense. Actually being with somebody that you want to be with and learning ways that, you know, for instance, let's just say yesterday I had a phone call from my girlfriend and she's complaining about her husband and that I guess she was looking through his social media feed and found him checking out girls or liking pictures of girls. And my thing to her was, why do you have the time to look through his shit? And first off, why are you with somebody if you even have to look through their shit? Honestly, I don't have the time. And if I think that I had to look through the shit and make time to look through it, why the fuck would I be with that person? And it, it hits home because it's like, I think a lot of us get to the point, especially, you know, I, it's men too, because I was married to men who were very, very insecure. But it, I feel like a lot of women do this too, is that they sit there and they nitpick and pick and pick. And, you know, you're not spending time with me. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing that for me. And realistically, it's because you're fucking bored. Like find a hobby, find something you're passionate about, find a business, you know, shindig that you like, or get into an athletic, teach a spin class, teach a fucking pottery class, do something to make yourself not bored. When you are happy and you are satisfied and you're constantly trying to achieve those goals you want to, let me tell you, you're not going to be preoccupied with what the fuck is your, your man looking at or what is he doing. And second of all, your man is going to be more preoccupied in spending time with you because you're a sophisticated woman who is busy getting shit done. So for instance, we all go through the moods where I feel like, you know, we haven't spent time together or you get a little bit needy. And I realize that you know what? That's me. That's my insecurity. That's something that I need to work on. And that's something that I need to progress to get better. And what I notice is that like, for instance, right now, it's freaking 720 at night. I just got done working a long day, came home, cleaned some of the house, came upstairs, do my podcast. And Kevin is downstairs doing work, but let me tell you, I know that when this is done, he's going to be more preoccupied with getting my attention because I have been taking care of my needs and what I need to allow him to take care of what he needs to where we can have now time together to actually be a couple. And he doesn't bitch at me when we go places and I'm on my social media feed posting shit. I don't bug him if he stays at the office until eight o'clock at night getting shit done because that's him. I control me. He controls him. And that's how we together blend and we work well. The way you need to look at relationships is don't look at a plan B. You have your plan A and your plan A is that you need to think about how you can work together to build an empire. Build something together. My relationships before were always about me building myself and never building my partner into my life. That was my problem. It was my fault. I probably could have made it work if I really wanted to make it work. But honestly, it was just convenient for me. And this time is different. You know, the one thing that I've learned... And my last relationship was, I was not the needy one. I was the one who was always getting bitched at. I was the one who always got, where are you at? What are you doing? Who are you with? What are you working out? Who are you working out with? Where are you? Go That's all I got all the time. So over, gosh, seven, 10 years of dealing with that, eventually you just have had enough. So I have learned from the aspect of getting hounded like that to to teach my friends, teach my clients, teach people that it doesn't progress to be a bitchy partner because all you're going to do is make your partner 
not even want to be around you. They don't even want to be next to you because all you do is fucking bitch at them. That's why I say you're bored. Get a hobby. Do something. Enjoy something in life. You know, learn learn how to, to build an empire together. And for instance, you know, I'll give you a transition life, you know, in my life is... I have owned skincare clinic now for going on 21 years Um, with the COVID and the transition and everything that's happening. There's a huge transition in my life, which I have not talked about, which I am now openly going to start talking about. But I am transitioning a lot of my comfortability of what I am with my skincare and my industry and what what I've done. And many of you guys do not know that I own an electrical company with Kevin who is my other half, my plan A, I should say. And for me, I've always had a plan B. And with trusting the transition and building a partnership and building an empire and training somebody to turn my clinics to having her take over them and transitioning to me working with my plan A partner forever is is a huge, huge endeavor for me. It is the epitome of not having control in my life whatsoever. And let me tell you, I am a freaking control freak. So not to have control and not to have control if what if something happens is extremely frightening But at my age and at my knowledge and what I've learned is there is not a plan B for me. I only have a plan A. And my plan A is I'm going to make this motherfucking shit work. And that's what's going to happen. With making the transition, we have grown the company about 400% within this year. And... Our growth is not over yet. It's going to even do better by the end of this year. And next year, we are looking at a growth that will be way more than that. So when I say that you tra- you change your transition to better you, not be bored, um, to focus your life on, on a goal, on obstacles, things that you want to achieve, you achieve that with your partner and you blend that. And for me, growing up with a single mother, I was, learn- I was taught how to just take care of myself. And unfortunately, I have taught my son that trait of taking care of himself. And so I'm hoping that with this transition in my life, he sees this and he understands this. And I preach to all of the women out there that are single moms or that are doing what I did which is a huge mistake to show your child, you need to work on a partnership. Stop bitching at them for working late. Stop bitching because maybe a woman DMs them because because they're hot and that that girl that DM'd them is, is, I don't know, has a hot rocking body. Guess what? That is a privilege. Enjoy that. Tell them, fuck, I am so proud that you can get a girl like that. That is fucking awesome because that has happened. I'm going to work 10 times harder to make myself look that hot because you deserve that. Change your mindset. Change your mindset in your life and you'll notice that things will change in your life. Your partner will want to be with you. He will want to spend time with you. You will lose that weight that you want to. You will gain that business you want to. You will have happier, healthier kids in your life. It's all about not bitching and not going to your plan B. It's about working on your motherfucking plan A. So as I go back, you have nothing to give somebody if you are broken. Let me repeat myself. You have nothing to give somebody if you are broken. If you are broken, you have pieces that are broken You need to fix them because there's no way you can have a healthy, happy relationship with anybody, business, partner, friendship, if you're broken. 
and I'm not perfect by any means. I am broken every, every freaking day, but I wake up in the morning with a mindset that I'm going to make this day better than the last day. And you know what? If I wake up and I don't have that mindset, I put on YouTube or I put on a podcast that is going to change my mindset. Just before this podcast, I'm not feeling the best. I'm um, going through some health, health things right now, which I'll share maybe on my next podcast. And so I'm nauseous right now. I'm not feeling the best. But you know what? I turned on in YouTube. I listened to really motivational podcasts before I stepped on here or hopped on here, whatever you want to say. And it inspired me to get over the feeling of not feeling good and bringing to you my feelings and my my desire to share and devote my thoughts to you and help help to make this world a better place. And maybe my faults and things that I've done are going to encourage you to do something different. And it's all about your mindset. It's all about your mental toughness. So if you don't have a mission in your partnership, you don't have any contribution. And I mean that as far as I'm sure you saw my last podcast where Kevin and I talked about how we set goals and we do things in life. I've never had that in my life whatsoever. I thought that was fucking weird. I didn't know what was what that was. I didn't I didn't I was like, okay, this guy is whacked. He wants to have like goals with me. But honestly, it's a motherfucking partnership. That's what you have to have in order to grow, in order to do things, in order to have that empire you want. You need, how do I say, the nutritional facts of a successful partnership. That is the key. And to end this podcast, you get what you deserve. Meaning, if I bitch, I moan, I complain, I get what I deserve from him. I get the fact that he doesn't want to come around me. I get the fact that he wants to stay at work until midnight. I get the fact that he doesn't want to do special things for me because I do not deserve it because I'm bitching and moaning and complaining. But let me tell you, if I kick ass in business, I go to work just like this. I'm on my fucking podcast. I'm dominating what I want to do. I'm getting my website done. I'm getting the electrical service side, you know, implanted. I, I'm getting goals orientated. I'm getting structure done. To him, that is fucking attractive. And he wants to spend time with me. And he wants to do those things. So if there's any advice that I can give to anybody out there watching, whether you're female or male, stop being bored Take care of yourself, inspire yourself, work on your relationship as a partnership, and don't ever think that you have a plan B ever. It's always plan A. And that's even with business. If you listen to any of the gurus out there, they never have a plan B. It's always plan A and you make fucking plan A work. So with this, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be more spunky next time. But with that, please rate and review. Please share. And I will uh, talk to you guys next time. Thanks for turning in this week. I hope you feel more empowered and more inspired to love the skin you're in. As we navigate new society norms and beauty daily, make sure to always ask yourself, what the fuck is beauty to me? And know that's all that really matters. If you love this content today, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Follow me and get more info on my guest at virago.studio. Yes, I said it. Virago.studio. 
And that's the shit. See you on the next episode, beauties.